Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to I have run out of video ideas, so we're doing a DLC tier list. In this episode, look at this, we're doing a tier list. We got S all the way down to F. Let's see what my opinions are and how they compare to yours. All right, let's start off with the Beach Bum DLC. I'm gonna be inclined to say and give this a D tier. The reason why, pretty simple. Beach Bum DLC, while in size and in content, isn't all that great. At the time that it came out, it was definitely a step and a bit of a goodwill thing from Rockstar to give the DLC away for free. And also on top of that, of course, the 500k that came with that too. Uh, generally speaking, it's not the most amazing thing, but I don't want to put it in F tier for the simple reason that it wasn't a bad DLC. It added more content to the game. It added more content to a game that already had, you know, plentiful content with its launch. And overall, it was a pretty decent DLC. Nothing that should be released today, but decent. All right. Then we move on to the content creator. The content creator is arguably going to be an S tier forever and ever. I strongly believe that without the GTA Online content creator, the game would not have been as popular or still alive as it is until this day. Because between all the large gaps of DLCs that might not be that interesting to some people, people would always come back to use the new vehicles or use the new tools within the content creator, no matter how broken it was for many years to come back and make something amazing. I could go on for hours of just how many amazing creations I have played over the years. And the most fun I have with GTA Online until this very day is with stuff that the community has made. If I was forced to play Rockstar created races, deathmatches and all that sort of stuff, uh, I'm good. I quit. <laughs> so to those who have made anything that is worth noteworthy of any sort of quality, thank you, thank you, thank you. Without you guys, I don't know where I would be. I genuinely, I'd, I'd be bored of my mind. Moving on to the very first, and I guess in general, holiday, little season in gta online a b tier nah, i just i'm just kidding it's an a tier sure you can very much argue that it's horrible to drive on if it lasts for too long like it did with this year it gets really on your nerves but generally speaking it's always a special time and especially when it came out for the very first time back on the 360 and ps3 days it was just mind-boggling like oh my god the entire map is covered in snow what is going on and you know it was just simply amazing uh, obviously, back then, there was a little bit more special, you know, they would release a new car or two with it as well, but nowadays, you know, the event just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and generally speaking, it's just honestly such a great time. The Valentine's Day Massacre is going to get a D tier. It's a limited time event, it really didn't do all that much, it added the Roosevelt and Gustavberg Sweeper. You can look very cool on the side of the car with it, but that's really mostly what the DLC had to offer when it came out. Limited time event, so... It was gone after a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. The Business DLC. I'm kind of struggling to place this one. I'd like to put it in between like a C and a D tier. Because I feel like giving it a D tier and placing it along the lines of like the Beach Bum and the, you know, Valentine's Massacre DLC. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, C tier I feel like is a little too high. So I'd be more inclined to kind of go like... I'd go to C tier purely for the fact that it will just add a, a Turismo R and the special car by like two great additions to the game but and it actually you know stayed longer than a week but other than that yeah yeah you like it it didn't really like you know give the kick up the behind that gt online already kind of needed around that time i mean it was march 2014 and well everyone was like screaming where's the highest where's the highest next up the high life updates arguably very strong b tier it added a second apartment allowing you to store even more vehicles when I say even more vehicles, you can now store 20 vehicles instead of only 10. Yes, that's what GTA Online Garages used to be like. And it did indeed also not allow anyone to pick any other vehicle other than the top of its class. The fact that the Massacre was added in the ballpark rifle. I mean, the Massacre is such a great car. Like, uh, look, I, I'm nostalgia and everything, but man great car great dlc overall and yeah, generally speaking just very good quality of life stuff in there for sure as well i believe it was also the introduction of non-contact which till this day is a um 
very worthwhile addition to the game if you've ever played uh, contact races in public lobbies. Even though for some reason people don't know that non-contact exists and prefer bumper cars. I prefer contact as well, to be honest, but, you know, just avoid them. LOL. The I'm not a hipster update. A very strong C tier here. It was a cool DLC, you know? It really showed that Rockstar was not afraid to also just do something bonkers, you know? Add a panto with all kinds of the wacky customization it had going on for it. It was just a fun DLC. In terms of how much content it added, not as much, you know, it was one of those old school DLCs, but the overall vibe and the, you know, clothing especially also was just very, very cool. The Independence Day is special. I'm gonna have to give this one a D tier, primarily because, again, limited time event. The monster truck, very cool, so it doesn't deserve to be an F tier at all. Mosca the Cool Edition, the Beer Hats, also a cool edition, uh, but generally speaking, you know, again, didn't really add that much content. Limited time event, so it was gone after a couple of weeks but yeah enjoyable it added a monster truck what could possibly go wrong the flight school updates i'm inclined to give this a c tier but also kind of leading towards b um i'm gonna have to go with c though look flight school is very cool i really really enjoy it but it was kind of like all that the dlc really had to offer at the time uh, in terms of like uh, other game modes that were added were also very cool but yeah, generally speaking, it's a bit of a C plus tier, I would say. Uh, definitely until this day, though. If you never played the flat school as a whole in GTA Online, highly encourage you to do that. Some very cool challenges in there. Try to go for gold. There's some very fun moments in there for sure. The last team standing update is an F tier because it added bulletproof helmets, and I hate those things. The next one, GT Online Heist. What hasn't been said about it already? It's going to be stuck on S tier forever. Look, let's be honest about Heist. Everything has been said about it already. I could go on and on about forever with how the impact of the DLC as a whole had. As a matter of fact, I've done a video on it before, so go check that out if you haven't yet. But yeah. Great DLC, but I guess nowadays definitely a little bit more on the outdated side, you know, especially with uh, some of the uh, heist in there requiring more driving about the map than doing actually anything. But the overall vibe of the DLC and the way that you prepare for the heist and inevitably finally do the heist is definitely very cool. I do feel that Series A gets a little bit too much hate. Sorry. Ew, God and Gain Part 1. Ew, God and Gain Part 2. Both seats here. Because I kind of feel that they're, they're pretty much the same DLC, really. Sure, they definitely added some very cool vehicles to the DLC. But overall, they didn't really add much in terms of content. Coming off the, the highest DLC, having to then look at the Ill God and Gain's DLC and just look at it like, hmm, I just earned a bunch of money with the highest. I did the Chrono Mastermind. Should I really spend $10 million on a golden jet? No. No, you shouldn't. But some people did anyways, and then they cried about how everything is too expensive again. <laughs> I was smart with it. I kept my 13 million and I used it for the many DLCs afterwards. I was like, screw this. I don't need a gold jet. Just waste the money. I still don't own one. Probably never will either, because just throwing money in a well. Screw it. The free mode update is getting an A tier from me. Now, you might be wondering, like, what is wrong with you? I'll explain. The free mode update, in my opinion, is one of the most important updates to the game. For the simple reason that it laid the foundation to anything that came after that. Businesses literally prep missions in highs like rockstar kind of figured that why do we want to have people constantly going through loading screens go to different game modes and load up a job and that sort of stuff when everything can just be in free mode the free mode events itself really just injected a new life in the free roam and basically made it a reason to kind of stay around because you might end up in an event or you might just be driving about and then suddenly it's like hey here's a headshot challenge or here's this or here's that some of them you know they're not that great but i feel overall it just gave a new life to free roam which i personally never really found too interesting anyways but nowadays because of the free mode update because of all the things that came afterwards, it really just became more enjoyable to be just messing about in free roam. Lowriders is getting a... Man, I'm not sure. I, like, I kind of want to put it between B and C. 
the reason why is pretty simple like i feel that a beats here because of the fact that it was a much requested thing and they finally actually added the low riders which people have been kind of screaming about but in terms of content it really was more like a seats here because there were basically six missions and it was pretty much what the dlc was which was very light especially after the free mode update i'm more inclined to get the gold c tier here to be honest with you um yeah the low riders super cool stuff uh, but i don't think that the cars and the customization on there um, really made for more than a few hours of content sadly the same thing kind of goes for the halloween surprise with the fact that you know again not that much content added just a couple of game modes you know a few cool cars and that's pretty much it really executive and other criminals is getting a c tier it added a yacht which was rather expensive but in terms of gameplay it didn't really add much it's just one of those typical gta online updates where you get a social hub that you can hang out with you can do a couple of missions and that's pretty much it it added vip wait that's right it added vip work hold up b tier very cool stuff actually i forgot about that stuff and better yet Piracy protection on the yacht is some of the most coolest moments I've had in the game. I apologize, executive and other criminals. Very good stuff. Stay on the B tier. Very nice. Really enjoyed it. VIP works. Definitely some of the cooler missions in the game as well. And the fact you could, like, spawn a buzzer behind you. And yeah, I just forgot about that stuff. I apologize for putting it on C. Uh, definitely a, a solid B there. For sure. For sure. Be my Valentine. Look, it's an F tier. It's basically doing the same thing as they did in 2014, but then like years later and then really not really adding much else to it. It also added the worst adversary mode in the game or one of them worst in the game till death do us part. Why is that in the game? Just no, it doesn't work with randoms at all. Lowriders, custom classics. Again, small updates. It's done. It's been done before. There isn't really a whole lot added to them. Like, oh my god, wow, I love this. You know, like, nah. Finance and felony. I'm inclined. So I, I struggle with this one. I'm inclined to give it a beat here, purely because of the fact it was the first business in the game. Um, but I just really don't like crates. Like, it's crates. Uh, you know, I'm like, I'm more leaning. Uh, Man, even when it came out, it was just. Uh, I'm gonna have to give it a D tier. But I also like. Also, there's the CEO office, so I'm inclined to go more C. I'm giving it a C, but I'm just. Uh, crates is just like. The, no, I just don't like it. It's. Nah, nah, nah. It's really crates that just bothers me. <laughs> Cunning Stunts, A tier. It goes without saying that Cunning Stunts was just a great DLC. The stunt races up until this day, while in most cases uh, definitely not built for an Italian GTO going 200 miles an hour down the tube, it definitely is one of the better stuff within the game still. Sure, with this, obviously, again, the content creators went a little bit crazy and started making some even better stuff later down the line. But overall, a very, very solid update that uh, I think many of us still enjoy until this day. And the RE7B before it got nerfed. Does anyone remember? <laughs> that was crazy. GT Online uh, Biker DLC. I'm inclined to kind of just give it a solid C here. If it was up to only having the passive businesses in there, I'd be inclined to just give it a D tier. I don't really like passive businesses because it doesn't really add any gameplay value to it it's just something that runs in the background uh, the clubhouse luckily though had some things to do in between all the waiting for those businesses so i guess there was a silver lining with it uh, those contracts are definitely very cool especially the newer ones that were added as well it was actually a nice addition but generally speaking uh, it was a it was an all right dlc it definitely was the first passive businesses in the game so it had a positive impact on everyone's pockets but i don't think we should be judging dlcs solely with how much money it makes you import and export that is going to be a solid s tier why do we even have to argue why it's an s tier dlc i mean import and export is the most old school gta online dlc that was added to the game then also the fact that after the biker business where you just kind of sit there like yeah um can I start doing a sale mission yet? I'd like to play the game. Whereas import and export are like, you know what? 
I know you're tired of waiting, players. Let's do this. You go and just keep going back and forth with your things. And sure, the cooldowns could be a little bit annoying, but if you combine it, obviously, with the VIP work, it was just... Uh, it was. It's still something that I wouldn't even mind playing right now, because it's just... It's just fun. It's old school. Sure, as you drive back and forth with the map, but it's just, I don't know. It's just good. It's just good fun. It's just, it's just, it's just good fun. That's, you know, that's it. Cunning Stun Special Vehicle Circuit. It's rather cool. The addition of these special vehicles to be able to be used within stun races and getting their own stun races were very cool. But there was one glaring issue. Every single race wasn't a Ruin 2000 race, and there was also the Rocket Voltic races where you were playing the rocket voltic races and you would be doing nothing but this to your controller over and over and over again it got really annoying and i don't like it and this is why i avoid those races like a plague the blazer aqua races though cool but meh you know, it was something that could have been done better. And the Runa 2000 races, I actually had a world record in at some point, you know. Just so, uh, you know, bit of a brag there. Mm -hmm. Gun running. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna raffle some feathers by putting it in D tier, but allow me to explain myself. Just, just allow me to explain myself. I'm very much a believer in the fact that if you're going to release a DLC, it has to be something that you can actually play. Whereas with gun running, you set up your bunker, you resupplied your business, and you just waited. The rest, not so much. Oh wait, uh, hold up, actually, hold, let's go back. It also had some very cool missions with the MLC, so never mind. There were some cool missions in there. I'd, I'd be still more inclined to lean it towards D, to be honest. But I think the only redeemable factor were really those missions, but... Yeah, I don't know. I'm not really a fan of Paths of Business as a whole. It just doesn't add any gameplay. Uh, not a fan. Smugglers Run. Um, look, I think the struggle that we're going to have with Smugglers Run is pretty simple. For the content itself and the missions, if you're judging them outside of the fact that it's part of a business, it's a B tier. If you're judging it from the fact that you're doing the missions to fill up your hangar, it is probably a D tier if not worse. But because I solely want to base it on the content itself and how cool some of those missions are, having recently played them again, I'm gonna have to be going with a B tier. Because some of those missions in there are probably better to be played as a contact mission, but at the same time, they are very cool. And I don't think Smugglers Run should really ever be seen as a business, but more so as something very different to do which uh, is kind of where they missed the mark. Speaking of not missing the mark at all, Doomsday is an S tier. Uh, look, again, we've talked about it a couple of times. It's probably one of the few things that are kind of left as a challenge within the game. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, it's Doomsday Heist. It's arguably one of the best heists in the game. Um, it's, just, it's just great. Like the whole vibe of it and the soundtrack, like, ooh, the soundtrack, ooh, it's so good. Southern San Andreas Super Sports Series, better known as an F-tier DLC because it added hot ring races, which are dog shit, and then there's also the advanced handling flags, and generally speaking, it wasn't that good. Also, the DLC title is way too long, and it was awful to have in your YouTube titles. Minus points for that too. <laughs> After Hours is a D-tier DLC. It didn't add any gameplay. Again, it just it just didn't add any gameplay. It was a nightclub where you could hang out and just dance a little bit. And then there was the passive business that you just kind of sat there and just twiddled your thumbs. I don't want to judge it on like how good it is for money making and that sort of stuff. Sure, the whole idea of having a central hub and everything like that is nice and all, but there it just did it just did not add any deal like any sort of content at all. It was just a social hub with a passive business running in the background, which at that moment in time in 2018, did we really need another passive business? No. No we didn't. Speaking of things that we didn't need oh wait hold up Arena War! There we go. Perfect. Casino DLC. Why? Same reason as After Hours. It didn't have any gameplay whatsoever except for like six missions and a wheel that some countries couldn't use. Thank you very much. 
Casino Heist. Do we really have to like talk about Casino Heist as well? I mean, a completely different approach to how heists were done by having three different kind of approaches to, yeah, the same heist, but I don't know. It's got a soft spot for me. It's a Casino Heist. What's not to like? The Los Santos Summer Special. I'm inclined to give it a D tier for the simple reason that the missions that were added to the yacht and given the yacht a new purpose was cool. The missions themselves are also rather cool. Um, it hurts because it should have been the Cops and Crooks DLC, but uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh oh. Okay. Well, this is this is the this is the one that uh, is going to ruffle some feathers, isn't it? Ah, yes. The Cayo Perico heist. We have arrived at that moment where everyone is going to see that it's a B tier. Now, before you throw stones at me, hear me out. Well, actually, you probably heard my arguments about the Cayo Perico heist plenty of times already. But yeah, it's not a good heist. And I will take that to my grave. I don't think the Cayo Perico heist is a good heist. The islands could have been utilized so much better. It wasn't. And overall, no, just no. The only reason why anyone is going to put it as an S tier is because it makes you a lot of money. Don't deny it. Los Santos Tuners. Ah, oof. This one is tough. So, for the content, I want to say that Los Santos Tuners is something that I'm inclined to give a S tier. And yes, I do realize that KGJ and Sasanta exist, but I'm just going to block those out and ignore them. Because effectively what you got with tuners was a mini heist update. And you can't deny how cool those contracts were. Don't don't even deny it. I mean, Unipository finally being able to rob that. I mean, the train mission. I mean, the list goes on and on. There's just there's a lot of very good stuff in there. A lot of good, very stuff in there. Speaking of very good stuff, the contract DLC. I don't think I have to do a whole lot of explanation as to why. The fact that it's effectively the closest we're going to be getting to a single player DLC, the return of Franklin Lamar, heck, Dr. Dre being in there, getting a behind the scenes look of how he like produces his stuff and just the missions themselves were all right. But I think the main draw really is the story that was being told there and just getting that old school feeling back of like, hey, Rockstar still knows how to make single player great quality content. <laughs> Can we please have that again sometime? Like, you know, maybe a, a next game or something, you know, maybe? The Criminal Enterprises is a D tier. Look, the UOP missions were cool, and that's really the main carry within the whole DLC. I don't really want to see the quality of life stuff as part of the actual DLC, because it's not content, it's just stuff that should have been done to the game years ago. Uh, plenty has been said about it already, but the Halloween stuff is definitely a highlight in that DLC too, even though it was drifty and it wasn't actually part of the main DLC, I guess. Los Santos Drug Wars. This is a tough one for me. Um, I'm inclined to go like C, D, but I don't know, man. It's just like, was it really the DLC to be needed and wanted? Like, generally speaking... Uh, Eh, meh, you know, like meh, it's not, like I'm trying to think what they even added to it at all, like we haven't even had the whole DLC yet, you know, like the missions were cool, but they didn't really do anything new, like I'm inclined to just kind of go like a D tier to be honest, like primarily because the asset business and like some of the stuff and the themes that they had with it. Uh, but generally speaking, no. And I also feel like doing it dirty by just bringing it down to like an F tier with like be my Valentine and stuff feels wrong. But yeah, no. Mm. And there you have it, my GTA Online DLC tier list. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave it a like, subscribe for more. And if you really like what you see in the channel, become a member like Chloe, KFC Chicken, Not Fatigue, and GTA Plus. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all. Later. Ah, I can't wait to see what people are gonna say about that B tier Kai Perico heist. But it makes so much money! Ah!